Hello and welcome to the review of the Gaui 548's Hexa helicopter. First I'm going to tell you about my setup here. I have the Gaui goons unit here in the middle, uh, wires to the front, uh, that's the going direction. Uh, I have the Gaui uh, Hexa octo adapter here for this Hexa helicopter and group 1 heli back here uh, to feed uh, power to the gimbal and goons unit. Uh, then I have the Gaui motors and Gaui ESCs in these pipes here. Uh, this is the super combo model and all, everything, uh, these motors and uh, these ESCs and goons uh, and this adapter come in the uh, super combo. This uh, Krufan unit uh, and the crane free gimbal doesn't include in this uh, super combo. Building of this uh, Hexa helicopter is uh, very simple. Only thing you have to do uh, is follow the manual and uh, that's it because uh, every pouch you have is labeled and numbered and in the manual there's number of pouches you have to take and every the screws are on their own pouches so and the pouches of screws are labeled as well uh, so it's very easy to build I think it's easiest helicopter I have ever ever built uh, because everything is so easy to follow and manual is clear and pouches are labeled and numbered and uh, the wires of the ESCs in the super combo are color coded so you have to put your the right color to right color to get the right spinning direction that's uh, explained in the manual as well and everything is explained in the manual so just follow the manual and you, you'll be fine. Next the Guins unit. The Guins unit is uh, very easy to set up. I only looked in the wires and went to fly and everything worked well. Just uh, made uh, a airplane model to the uh, uh, transmitter and that's it. Just uh, make the switches for the GUINs, uh, the normal mode, stabilization mode and GPS mode and return home function. And I have the gimbal so that's need to be set up too. Everything is explained in the GUINs manual there are instructions for fine-tuning of the system, but I think you don't have to do this if you do everything as the manual says. Uh, and the GUINs will work very well uh, without any fine-tuning. Uh, just make sure you have switched here the C uh, hexa mode and the X or plus mode, uh, whatever you want. But if you use the gimbal, I think you have to use the X mode to it, so it will be facing uh, to the front. The tools you have to use, you need uh, one and a half, mit half mit millimeter hexa tool, uh, two millimeter hexa tool, uh, 11 millimeter nut wrench for the spinners, and some kind of pliers are good for these uh, things in the middle of the frame to hold on and I think that's it you don't need anything special ah pliers for this if you use the gimbal next some th things I want to say about this heli first up is the canopy here uh, I personally don't like it because you have to cut these holes he here with your own self and the that kind of thing, but the mounting is the biggest problem, I think, uh, because <coughs> there are four normal uh, and three uh, five millimeter long bolts, and I think you're going to lose them. Uh, I don't know why they didn't use thumb screws or something like that, because it would be m so much easier to mount this canopy and take it off but now it's kind of slow and take some time and don't lose those bolts and uh, there are no extra bolts 
coming with this kit so don't lose things or you're not going to get this done and fly because no extra bolts are supplied so be careful not losing those next there are these folding arms uh, these four arms fold to the middle uh, you have to uh, loosen up these four screws here to get it done uh, but, and it's a quite good thing because you can put this so much tinier places if you fold these arms if you have a s small car or something so it's a good thing uh, next is the battery place uh, if you have this go with grain gimbals the battery place is uh, very small because of this thing uh, you can't use four as batteries uh, and you have to make sure your batteries fit here it's very hard to take them out because the velcro strap holds on so good and you can't push it down so you have to do the like this to get it out uh, and uh, next the GPS module make sure it's as far as away from all the uh, ESCs and battery wires and stuff to uh, make sure it works uh, properly because the electromagnetic field uh, can confuse the module uh, and it will drift and stuff if you don't do so and if you use the ESCs from these uh, the BECs from these ESCs make sure you use only one take uh, all the five other fire wires plus wires off uh, so they won't burn each other and if you use a uh, Gavi Crane 2 or Crane 3 uh, or any other gimbal uh, use uh, different back not this uh, ESC's back because it you will burn your uh, back of this ESC's because they're so small and uh, this crane tree gimbal won't even work if you use this it will be so jittery and uh, servos will lag and it will don't it will don't won't be smooth I think there's one good th thing to do uh, draw here uh, arrow to direction uh, the g is where's the front because uh, when you put this down you have uh, if you don't have the gimbal you don't know which direction is the front so I think that's good thing to do uh, also when I built this I labeled these arms like this one do three four five six because you have to put uh, these arms when you assemble this uh, in the right place to get the right spinning direction and uh, to be able to fit them here so uh, that's good thing to know uh, everything here is pre-soldered uh, you don't have to solder anything every ESC wire and stuff are already soldered as well as this uh, battery bottom plate wire thing is already soldered I soldered these BEC wires to here and this bottom plate is a uh, power board uh, so you plug your ESCs to this bottom plate here and you uh, every every uh, connector is already soldered and these two so you just plug your connectors in uh, and that's it and go to fly so <laughs> that's very easy to set up to but just make sure every ESC gets power and every so uh, solder connection is uh, good so I think be careful with that if they have faulty solder joints or something so make sure everything is okay there uh, now the flying uh, some tips to that uh, when you land uh, hover it about 20 centimeters or 15 centimeters off the ground and just push the throttle to zero and it will drop uh, because if you touch the ground with throttle on it will flip over to the ground and you will crash and that's not good if you have expensive cameras or something so that's no good uh, 
all these props are uh, very well balanced and they they will work good, very well. Next is Crane 3 gimbal. Uh, it's very easy to set up. It works very well and <clears throat> everything uh, is just good uh, aluminum and carbon fiber. So that's it. Uh, there there's two uh, two leads, but you have to use only one for this lower servo here to get it to the goons in it. Uh, and you need your own wire for the tilt movement of the, your crane if you want to use that. Everything comes with this uh, crane 3 gimbal to mount your camera. Uh, the servo arms comes here as well as the screw to mount your camera on the on bottom plate of the crane 3 here. And there are many holes to get the right CGY for the camera. So that's good too. And the uh, uh, crane 3 and 2 fits oh, here to the bottom plate of the uh, 548s. You don't have to use these adapters which are for 500x. Enjoy flying your 548s hexas and be careful with the building of these models and if you use expensive cameras be careful and enjoy flying. It's a very fun machine and easy to set up and easy to build and it suits for all kind of flyers because it's very stable on the air and uh, I personally think that all the GPS and stabilization modes are uh, good for beginners. Uh, the normal mode drifts a bit for every direction uh, and that's it but if you if it is very windy I think you don't uh, don't use this at all and if you use use only stabilization and normal modes because the barometer of this guins unit uh, will be confused with the air flowing so fast in under the canopy and it will jump up and down in the air and that's not good and I think you're going to crash it so and when you're using the GPS mode, make sure to use the canopy and put the GPS module as far as away from the, all the electronics as you can. So, goodbye.